So in Chadwick's experiment, he was taking alpha particle source. So an alpha particle source um, were radioactive elements. They didn't necessarily know what, uh, what the alpha particle composed of necessarily because they didn't know about the existence of some of the parts. Um, but they had these alpha particles um, that were hitting a sheet of beryllium. So down here we have a nuclear reaction that's happening. So the helium, so helium nucleus is essentially a alpha particle. So a he, an alpha particle we know are actually two neutrons and two protons. We know that today. They didn't know that back then. When it hit the beryllium, so inside of this beryllium sheet here, so uh, inside of this thin sheet, um, when these two things reacted, there was actually some of the beryllium that was being changed into carbon-12. Now, if you add up things, if we add up the three, the, 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 the atomic, the atomic masses, nine plus four is 13. The atomic numbers, four plus two is six. Well, that's where we get the six of carbon, but we have an extra neutron. So that neutron was kicked out. They didn't know this. So this was the source of this neutrons, this, whatever these things were, they couldn't see them, but they could see evidence. So what Chadwick saw is that when he ran this into a, 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 a block of paraffin wax, and paraffin wax, just think of it a little bit like a candle. Um, once he ran that in, then the neutrons, when they ran into this paraffin, paraffin wax, would emit some protons. And they could detect those protons with, with a counter. They actually had a device uh, that could count the number of protons that were, were hitting it. So how did he explain this? Well, he explained it, he, that there must be some sort of particle that's being emitted. It has to be really heavy. And he proposed, because it was kicking out the same number of protons as neutrons coming in, uh, it was like a, they must have had similar mass. Now, so that really did prove that the mass of the proton and neutron must be similar. Now, how did they figure out that these neutrons were neutral? Well, the experiment doesn't tell you this, but let's think of how they were able to prove that everything was positive or negative. Well, likely what would have happened if they would have introduced a magnet or they would introduce an electric charge in between, would these neutrons have been pulled either towards the positive pole or the negative pole? No, they wouldn't have been. So they were neutral. They didn't have a charge. Whereas if we did this over here, if we put those, if we put those same charges over here, these, so think of it as being like a magnet with a positive negative end, then those protons would have been pulled down and deflected towards the negative, away from the positive. So this really did help prove two things. The existence of a neutron, that they have about the same mass, and that was really kind of a conservation of, a conservation of mass. Um, if you take one pool ball and you run it into the other pool ball, so if you take a, a moving pool ball and you roll it into a stationary pool ball, the one that's moving will hit the stationary one, and the stationary one will now move, and the, the one that was rolling will stop. Um, and they'll, they'll be equal mass, and they'll be equal velocity. The velocity in will equal the velocity out. Um, and so, yeah, it was a pretty ingenious um, experiment, and uh, it finally put the final piece in the puzzle of our third and final subatomic particle. Hopefully that helps understand this question.